Works Tractors. If you don't recognize this voice, that's because this is Chris, Courtney's brother, the guy who's usually behind the camera. For some reason, the intro audio is just gone. It's not attached to the video file at all. So you're going to get me telling you what we're looking at here. For those of you who follow Good Works Tractors Facebook or Instagram page, you may have seen Courtney's post about the skid steer being stuck. I hadn't seen it until this day when I was out there, which was the next day, and I was impressed by just how stuck that was. That left track is buried. It's gone. And I just thought this is going to be not as easy as I thought, and we both were hoping that the Kubota, which Courtney had already driven down there, the M4D071, 71 horsepower on that, we are really hoping that that's going to be able to pull this thing out. How did Courtney get this stuck? Well, he was trying to place a deer blind. Youth season was coming up that weekend. He was trying to get a deer blind set back there. He knew this was a soft and swampy area, but he also knew that the prior owner had used a tractor down here, cattle grazed down here, and he thought, all right, I'm gonna just test, this looks like the softest spot, this little dip. He walked through it, he drove his Can-Am over it, and then he thought, okay, I think we're good to go. Well, all right, the problem with that is Courtney weighs, give or take, 200 pounds. That Can-Am, we're guessing, weighs 600 pounds. That skid steer, on the other hand, weighs 12,000 pounds. So not exactly a good pretest of what would cross successfully and what wouldn't. But we had a beautiful day. I mean, perfect day to be doing this. It wasn't raining, not cold, there's no snow. It's a great day to be out there. I was gonna be driving the Kubota. Courtney would be manning the 333G. We got walkies, we're gonna talk to each other back and forth. We got two tie straps running from the Kubota to the skid steer. We're just gonna see if we can pull this thing out. And now we can drop into the audio we recorded that day. Okay, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna throttle up here, but then go real slow when it takes the tension out. And then, uh, you know, I'm gonna be back and going in reverse while you're trying to pull forward there. So we'll just see what happens. Here we go. Well, we are making a little bit of progress, though. Okay, we can go forward a little more. I just don't want to get the Kubota stuck. Yeah, I gotta imagine you're doing pretty good there. How do the front tires look? Front tire, tires seem pretty good. Um, I am, I am a, in front of the post more or less now, so we have to move. But, all right, we'll keep trying. Give me a sec. Let me know. Keep going right now. If we can get it turned a little bit more, I might be able to get my mulcher in front of this tree and use that as leverage to push away from it. Well, I haven't been able to move in a while, but I'll see now that you've moved if I can get a new position. So, ready to go. Okay, hang on. Can you back up over that and we can um, maybe try to reposition potentially? Yeah, I was just trying. I might be stuck, but I'll give it another whirl. Give me a second. Are you able to shorten these or not? Shorten them? No. Because that would get me in a place where I'm not between my ruts pulling. Let me back up and try and get a little more forward. 
try to uh, maybe loop the straps around and come back to the other side so they're a lot closer and maybe get on some real firm ground. You get me? Hello? Yeah, I'm backing up. I think if I go back far enough, we can double them back if we need to. Yeah, just don't be stuck on top of the straps with the tire. Take one out, put it the other side. Uh, yeah, they're both, yeah, the red, orange one's shorter. I don't know if it matters. Well, if we want pulling power from both sides and, uh, versus just one side. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. I'm going to put my the mulcher down so I don't lose progress. I've moved 18 inches, but then I want you to back up and just kind of start over again. Yep, just tell me when. Okay, go ahead. Down four. I'm ready when you are. Yeah, uh, I I should have been using that rock locker the whole time. I I think I got distracted mid Set. sentence talking to you because I was like getting ready to point it out, and then I realized I never did. It's not. I mean, it's weird because you're trying to use that foot for your throttle, but you can't use them both. So you have to use the hand throttle. Yeah. And uh, it's also so much resistance on that locker. Like no, it, no, it's got to like find its like yeah, gear and angle. drop in. Got her done. Uh, two drone batteries worth. So that was about. 40, 35, 40 minutes, yeah. something like that. So it didn't take too long, just took a couple, a few repositions. What really saved the day, as much as I hate to say it, is that Kubota. Well, is that Kubota, but it was, uh, it was that locking rear differential. You know, I, I know that that made um, my list of overrated things two or three years ago. And, uh, 
I forgot to tell Chris about that, and as soon as we did that the last time, the last kind of tug, it struggled, but it got it out of there. So um, it was just enough. You know, we were close, and you can see this, this middle part where it's all smooth and flat, that's rubbing along the belly of the skid steer. That's, that's as much of a problem as anything else, right? Because it's that resistance there that's doing it, um, that's kind of holding it back and making it that much harder to, to pull out. But this stuff, it's like a it's like lava or, or soup or something, you know? It is nasty and it just, it goes forever. But this is the path I was going through. I walk right through just fine. Four wheeler just fine. It'll take years for this to dry out, I feel like. It's, it's, Chris walked all through here setting up cameras and there wasn't any, I mean, his shoes were completely dry. Look at those fancy things. Completely dry, yeah. Obviously, that's, you know, you don't know what's hiding underneath the surface there, so. Uh, a couple toe straps, a Kubota, a couple shackles, in 40 minutes. Not too bad. That's pretty good for for us. If you look at that path, it's so deceiving. It looks like it would be, like right ahead there, there's just regular grass. I mean, there's a few reeds and everything. Somebody had a good comment, something like, if you, get, if you see cattails, stay away. There's a lot of good comments. I posted on Facebook and on YouTube, the community tab. There, <laughs> there were a lot of good comments on there. Um, you know, but we're pretty good at getting stuck, but we're getting better at getting unstuck. This is the fastest I think I've ever been unstuck. Well, that's, I got that 2038 stuck in the creek, but that wasn't too bad. That wasn't a 12,000 plus pound machine in this kind of muck. So anyway, hey, well, guess what? We actually sell and ship tractor attachments all over the place, all over the country. That's what I make these videos all about is to highlight that kind of thing, not really getting my equipment stuck, but that makes for, that makes for some fun video. And, uh, well, I guess if you're looking for a tractor attachment, we'd love to help you out. Something for the front end loader for the three-point hitch. We sell these mulchers too for skid steers, for tractors, stuff for ATVs, all kinds of stuff. GoodWorksTractors.com, check us out. And if you enjoyed today's video, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment, hit that thumbs up. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.